Hello all. This video is a follow-up of the topic private cloud storage at home we discussed last time. Today, we will see configuration of a DNS and SSL to enable access of the cloud storage over the internet. Link for part one is available in the description or at the top of the screen. First of all, we are gonna connect to the Pi and install CertBot. CertBot is an EC to use client for Let's Encrypt, which by the way is a certification authority that provides certification for TLS slash SSL encryption free of charge. As we have seen in the previous videos, we are using DietPy hyphen software command to install CertBot from the DietPy's repository. This takes care of all the pre and post requisites automatically. Installation has begun now and let's fast forward to the end to save time. Reboot the system to complete installation and reconnect to the Pi. Let's refresh the home page and ensure that it's still accessible in the local network. Now, let's go to no IP, which is a dynamic DNS provider and register a domain for our own cloud server. Provide your username and password here or sign up if new. In the dashboard, click host names followed by create host name in the next page. Provide the desired host name and domain here. Choose a record as the record type to point to an IP address. No IP would have automatically identified our IP address by now. Click create host name to complete the process. At this stage, the traffic address to the host name mytestcloud.ddns.net would be routed to my public IP address mentioned here. That's all we have got to do here. So let's log out and exit. Now we need to route the traffic directed from DNS to the router to the Pi in the internal network where we have the web server and own cloud configured. For this, we need to forward the HTTP and the HTTPS ports 80 and 443 to the Pi's internal IP address as we see here. In this specific model of router, port forwarding is under advanced setup and you may refer the user manual for your model to find it. Now let's get back to shell and make some changes to the server block file of Nginx. First, we'll take a copy of the default file and then edit the new file so that we can easily revert to the default config if needed. The new file is named after our domain name for quick identification. Now let's open this file and give our domain name at the server underscore name directive so as to match the request from this domain. And get the file saved. Then we need to make a symbolic link from the sites hyphen enabled directory of Nginx to this new file that we created. We will also unlink the default file from this directory. Next, let's test the syntax of the configuration file with the command nginx hyphen t. The test has returned successful, so let's get nginx restarted. Now, let's see if we can access our own cloud web page over the internet using the domain name that we created earlier.
It is indeed working and we will see configuring the trusted domain later in this video. Next, we will see how to secure or enable HTTPS for our own cloud web page. We will be using the CertBot client that we installed at the beginning of this video to obtain and install certificates for our web server to enable HTTPS. Let's have a look at the command. With the standalone plugin, our standalone web server is used to obtain certificates independent of any other software installed in the system. The installer plugin tells to install the certificates with Nginx. Email is provided for important notifications. Hyphen D stands for the domain to obtain certificates for. We also use pre and post hooks to stop and start Nginx so that the standalone plugin can bind to a port 80 to perform domain validation. RSA key size tells to install certificates with 4kbit RSA public key. There are a couple of hyphens missing in the pre and post hooks. Let's get that fixed and run again. Give A agreeing to the terms and conditions. I'm selecting one here which tells not to direct HTTP traffic to HTTPS. You may choose appropriately. That's it, we have successfully installed the certificates. Now, let's see if we can access our site via HTTPS. Yes, it's all looking good. Now, let's see renewing the certificates using CertBot. Here, our certificates aren't up for renewal yet, and no renewals were attempted. This command only attempts to renew certificates that expires in less than 30 days. Next up, we will schedule a cron to attempt to renew the certificates daily so that the certificates doesn't get expired. We are scheduling it to run at 00 minutes, 01 hours, every day of the month, every month, and every day of the week. Here, we will include pre and post hooks as well to stop and start the Nginx server for the standalone plugin to bind to port 80. Next up, we will add our domain to the trusted domain of own cloud to get the login page back. First, cd to the config directory of own cloud at bar www.owncloud.config and open the config.php file there. Add domain name under the trusted domains array and save the file. Let's refresh the home page and pass username and password to 
login. We have now successfully logged in, as you can see. Next, we will see how to map our own cloud server as a network drive on the PC for quick access. First, click Settings and copy the web DAV address. Now, right click here and click Add a network location. Provide the web DAV address that we copied here and click Next. Provide username and password of the own cloud user. Provide a suitable name for the network location. We now have a network drive mapped to our own cloud server as we see here. Let's get in by double clicking and we do see the files and folders from our cloud store here as expected. The web DAV address can also be incorporated with other suitable applications like ES File Explorer to extend our cloud server to Android, iOS, Mac, etc. That's all in this video. I would like to hear how it worked for you, so please share your feedback as comments. See you all next time.